Have you ever wondered where the inspiration for the infamous vampire Dracula came from? Brace yourself, for it's no mere fiction, but a chilling chapter of history. The year is 1431. Born in the mountainous region of Transylvania, now part of modern-day Romania, is a child named Vlad III. His father, Vlad II Dracul, is the ruler of Wallachia, a principality located south of Transylvania. Vlad II is dubbed Dracul, meaning dragon, after his induction into the Order of the Dragon, a Christian military order backed by the Holy Roman Emperor. However, this tale doesn't unfurl like an ordinary princely narrative. In 1442, Vlad II is summoned for a diplomatic meeting with Sultan Murad II. Unbeknownst to him, this meeting is a trap. Vlad II is arrested and so are his young sons, Vlad III and Radu. The Sultan releases Vlad II, but only under the condition that his sons remain as hostages. A few years later, the elder Vlad is overthrown by local warlords known as Boyars and meets a grim end in the swamps near Baltini, Wallachia. Meanwhile, Vlad's older brother, Mircea, suffers an equally horrifying fate. He is tortured, blinded and buried alive. These tragic circumstances, it seems, serve as a catalyst, igniting a spark of ruthlessness in Vlad III. His early life is marred by betrayal, loss, and a harsh introduction to the cruelties of the world. The stage is set for the transformation of Vlad III, the young prince, into Vlad the Impaler, a name that will soon strike fear into the hearts of many. A reign of blood is about to commence. Vlad III, now orphaned and angered, is on the brink of embarking on a journey that will etch his name into the annals of history, not as a noble prince, but as a gruesome figure of terror. It is the birth of a monster, a story that will inspire one of the most chilling characters in literature, Dracula. Once freed from captivity, Vlad III, now known as Dracula, started a reign of blood and terror that would shock the world. Vlad III, armed with a thirst for vengeance and a deep-seated hatred for his enemies, ascended to the throne of Wallachia in the year of 1456. His rule was anything but ordinary. For Vlad, power was not only to be gained, but also to be ruthlessly consolidated. In a grim banquet, he invited the boyars, the very warlords who had orchestrated his father's downfall. With the pretense of diplomacy, he had them stabbed and their twitching bodies impaled on spikes. It was a chilling message to any who dared to challenge his rule. The reign of Vlad III was not just about consolidation, though. He was also a fierce defender of his homeland. When the city of Constantinople fell to the Ottomans, it sent shockwaves through Europe. Threatened by an invasion, Vlad was tasked with the defense of Wallachia. His battle in 1456 was a resounding success, with legends whispering of Vlad personally beheading his opponent, Vladislav II, in mortal combat. But Vlad's reign of blood did not stop at the battlefield. Back home, he enacted strict laws and brutal punishments, leading to a significant drop in crime rates. His rules were simple and the punishment was always the same. Impalement, stealing, laziness, corruption, begging, and any other transgressions were met with the same grisly end. It was a reign of terror that kept the populace in check, yet it also led to a reduction in crime and corruption that no other ruler of Romania had been able to achieve before. Vlad's rule was not just characterized by his ruthless justice, but also by his insatiable thirst for blood. His campaigns against the Ottomans were marked by a trail of bodies. In a letter to a military ally in 1462, he boasted of killing 23,884 Turks. And this did not include those burnt in their homes or beheaded by his soldiers. Vlad's gruesome dining habits were also infamous. It was said he would feast among the impaled bodies of his victims, seemingly unfazed by the macabre spectacle. By some estimates, Vlad the Impaler was responsible for 40,000 to 100,000 deaths. This was an unfathomable number during a time when murders were committed one by one by hand. Vlad's reign was a bloody spectacle of power, terror, and ruthless justice. His name became synonymous with fear, and his legacy of blood and terror would inspire the creation of one of literature's most famous characters, Dracula. Vlad's reign was a bloody spectacle of power, terror, and ruthless justice, earning him the name Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler's reign of terror could not last forever. His end was as violent as his life. In the winter of 1476, Vlad found himself caught in the grips of a brutal battle near Snagov, a small village in southern Romania. His army, a modest group of about 2,000 valiant soldiers, was pitted against a formidable Turkish Bazarab force of 4,000. 
The odds were stacked heavily against Vlad, but if there was one thing we know about Vlad, it's that he never shied away from a fight. The battle was fierce and bloody, a fitting end for a man known for his ruthlessness. Despite the courage and determination of Vlad and his men, they were outnumbered and outmaneuvered. The Turkish Bazarab force, with their superior numbers and strategic positioning, began to overpower Vlad's army. The battlefield became a scene of chaos and carnage as Vlad's men fell, one by one. In the midst of the chaos, Vlad fought valiantly, his sword slashing through the air, his eyes burning with the fire of a man who refused to surrender. Yet even the mighty Vlad the Impaler was not invincible. He was fatally wounded, succumbing to his injuries on the battlefield. His reign of blood, which had cast a shadow of fear across Wallachia, had come to a brutal end. Following his death, Vlad's body was reportedly decapitated by the victorious Turks and his head was sent to Sultan Mehmed II, the Ottoman ruler, as a trophy. A fitting end, some would say, for a man who had shown no mercy to his enemies. And so the life of Vlad the Impaler came to an end. His reign of terror had been cut short, his once mighty army reduced to rubble, but his legacy lived on, his name forever etched in the annals of history. His brutal methods, his unyielding spirit, and his thirst for power would be the inspiration for one of literature's most infamous characters. Thus ended the life of Vlad the Impaler, a ruler whose gruesome deeds would inspire the creation of one of literature's most infamous characters, Dracula. The life and deeds of Vlad the Impaler did not die with him. They found a new, immortal life in the pages of Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula. This iconic piece of literature brought Vlad's gruesome legacy into the realm of the supernatural, casting him as the infamous Count Dracula, Stoker's Dracula, with his insatiable thirst for blood, mirrors Vlad's own bloody reign. The chilling tales of the vampire count have captivated audiences worldwide, immortalizing Vlad's infamous legacy in a way history books never could. These narratives have transcended cultural and linguistic barriers, becoming global phenomena and shaping our perception of the vampire mythos. From film adaptations to Halloween costumes, the cultural impact of Dracula is undeniable. It's a testament to the enduring allure of the macabre and our fascination with the darker side of human nature. From the bloody pages of history to the chilling tales of vampire lore, the legacy of Vlad the Impaler lives on, reminding us of the gruesome reality behind the legend of Dracula.